Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ellen Truskowski, and I am the Director of Student Assignment. And joining me today is... My name is Mandy Leathers, and I am a staff developer for the Student Assignment Office with District Application Programs. Tonight, we're basically here to walk you through step-by-step, step, give you some information about District Application Programs, which is DAP. Um, you'll hear us refer to it both, but District Application Programs or DAP is the same thing. They are our magnet and fundamental programs. The application period will open tonight at midnight and run through 5 p.m. next Friday. So Mandy's going to start off with some information about the programs, answer some information about priorities, and then I'm going to take you through a walkthrough of a live um, application so you know exactly what to expect. And at the end, we'll open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please just type them in the chat box, and we will be glad to address them. All right, thank you. We're going to start with just some basic information. District application programs are also known um, by the acronym of DAP. So we will, as Ellen said, refer to it in both ways. But district application programs encompass all of Pinellas County Schools magnet and fundamental programs, and there are 86 of them. All magnet and fundamental programs require an application. There is a randomized selection process and acceptance of an offer is required to attend. There are two models for our district application programs, either whole school, which means that everyone who attends that school has applied and accepted an invitation to attend, uh, or a program within a school, meaning that there is a zone population along with the population of students who have applied to attend that specific program at the school. Um, there are also countywide programs, which means it does not matter where you live within Pinellas County, you could apply to that program. And then most of our programs have specific application um, and or transportation areas, which means that the application area is based upon where you live. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a few minutes. All magnet programs, uh, most magnet programs provide arterial transportation within that application area or the designated transportation area. We're going to move into application areas next. As I mentioned, there are certain programs that are countywide, which means that regardless of where you live in the county, you can apply to attend that program. So it doesn't matter if you are in the North County, South County, you can apply to that program. Other programs have application areas, which are defined areas based upon your residential address. There are several different application areas. One is North County. There's a Mid County application area, South County, south of Ulmerton, and then some programs have unique areas, um, which are defined as uh, south of Ulmerton, north of Gulf to Bay, or somewhere in between there. Application areas are based upon the zoned middle school or the zoned high school for your address. To find um, what your zoned middle or high school is based on your residential address, you can go to pcsb.org backslash zone. Once there, you can enter your address and it will show you which um, middle or high school is zoned um, based on your address. On the back of the um, application, I'm sorry, on the back of the district application program guide, you can find a little bit more information about the application areas. This can be found at pcsb.org backslash DAP, and you can download this guide in English and uh, Spanish. But on the very last page is a map that shows Pinellas County and the um, the areas in which uh, the application areas are um, um, are laid out and how they're laid out, and so which middle and high schools are fall under each of those different areas. So you can see they're broken into North, Mid, and South County, 
And then um, that second column there on the left-hand side is the high school zone, so North, Mid, and South County. And then underneath, it gives a more definitive description of what encompasses the unique application areas and which programs fall into those unique application areas. Again, to find your zone school, you can go to pcsb.org backslash zone and then use this map as a tool to help you figure out which application area your residential address falls into. The DAP guide with that map can be found at pcsb.org backslash DAP. All of the application areas are also listed underneath each individual program description. So when you're flipping through um, and reading about the different programs that are offered, underneath of the, um, underneath of the title and underneath of, of the school where the program is located is the application area, and that will help you to determine if you're able to apply to that program based upon your address. The next topic that we're going to touch on is entrance criteria and ineligibility for district application programs. Most DAP programs do not have entrance criteria, but a few do. Entrance criteria exists for the Center for Gifted Studies, the Centers for Literacy and Ovation, Gibbs PCCA, which has an audition process, and then High School Cambridge ACE and IB programs. For the Centers for Gifted Studies, a requirement is a qualifying IQ score and a copy of a psychological report <clears throat> that indicates the student is gifted. An active educational plan is also required. Please note that if you are applying from a non-PCS school or from out of county, you will need to bring documentation to the school's gifted coordinator before January 26th of 2024, so later on this month. For the Centers for Literacy and Innovation, there are two programs. North County is Elisa Nelson and South County is Midtown Academy. <clears throat> Each school will schedule screenings to qualify for the Centers for Literacy Innovation and to be eligible students must pass that screening. High School Cambridge ACE and IB programs also have <clears throat> entrance criteria. There are some prerequisite courses that are required, um, required grades from middle school coming into high school and required test scores. For more information about the requirements for Cambridge ACE and IB, you can visit the Cambridge ACE and IB website for advanced studies. There are two reasons why a student may be ineligible for a district application program. The first reason is because they may be found academically ineligible. <clears throat> which means that they are applying to one of the programs with entrance criteria and they were determined to not meet that criteria. So whether it was for gifted or the Centers for Literacy Innovation or one of those high school IB ACE programs, IB or ACE programs, they may have not met those requirements for entry and therefore would be determined academically ineligible. For secondary students, they may um, also be found behaviorally ineligible. And this is determined by um, two, several criteria. One is the student has 10 plus referrals in the past year. So that would be the time frame between January and December of 2023, or any assessor from any school year. So those may be um, two reasons why a student may be found ineligible for district application programs. We're going to next talk briefly about program ranking and priorities. You can apply for one or up to five programs. So if you're only interested in one, you can select your one program and submit your application. If you're interested in three, you can submit three, but up to five. Ranking is from first choice, which is your number one choice, to your last choice, which would be number five. But please, please keep in mind that priorities only apply to the first choice. So whichever choice is ranked as number one, the priorities would apply to that one only during the initial application period. 
feeder pattern priority is for students who are attending certain schools or programs and are given priority to attend a related program at the next level. For example, fundamental students receive priority for a seat in a fundamental school at the next level. <clears throat> as long as that initial application with a number one program ranking is um, submitted and the invitation accepted during the acceptance period, which will begin on February 14th. So those criteria must be met in order for that priority to um, be applied um, for program to program. Sibling priority is next. Students who are um, students are given priority if they meet eligibility criteria and they have a sibling who will be attending the program at the same time. So that means that you have an elementary student who will be in fourth grade next year and you have an incoming kindergartner. Your incoming kindergartner would receive sibling priority because your older student will still be in that program um, in fourth grade in the same school at the same time. Sibling priority would not apply if you have a student currently currently in fifth grade who will be in sixth grade next year and therefore not in the same program at the same time. So again, to be considered siblings and to have sibling priority applied, same program, same time. If a student attends a program within a school, sibling preference doesn't extend to the traditional side of the school or to any other programs at that school, with a few exceptions, uh, being Elisa Nelson Elementary, Midtown Academy, John Hopkins Middle School, and Thurgood Marshall. The next priority is professional courtesy. Students are given priority if their parent works full time at the school to which they are applying. Proximity priority is next. Proximity priority is applied to the remaining available seats for kindergarten, sixth, and ninth grade applicants after feeder, sibling, and professional pr courtesy priorities have been applied. Proximity means the distance a student lives from the school, and all proximity distances are computed using Manhattan distance formulas to the nearest hundredth of a mile. And I'll give you ex an example of what that will look like in just a few minutes. The Pinellas County Property Atlas is the same resource that 911 uses and is used for latitude and longitude values for each address. The address coordinates for the school and applicant address are used in that Manhattan distance formula. And then the smallest MDF values are given that proximity priority. Elementary and middle schools offer proximity priority to 20% of the remaining seats after all of those other priorities are given with the exceptions of Mangrove Bay Middle School, Eastlake Middle School, Tarpon Springs Fundamental, and Midtown Academy. High school programs offer proximity priority to 25% of the remaining seats after the other priorities are given. This is what that would look like in terms of numbers. So let's say we have 100, avail 100 available seats at a middle school that has a 20% proximity priority. So 100 seats are available, and let's say 25 uh, seats go to students who have feeder pattern priorities, seven go to students who have sibling priorities, and then three staff priorities, their, their parents work full time at that school. So that would mean there were 65 remaining seats. Again, 20% of those <clears throat> would go to proximity priority or those smallest MDF values. So 20% of 65 would be 13 seats. So 13 seats from that wait list would have proximity priority automatically applied. And then 52 seats that were remaining on that list would go to the randomly selected names. Next, we are going to walk you through the application so that you know all the steps to take to make sure that you successfully submit that application during this application window. Okay, so you're gonna go to focus.pcsb.org. If you have not set up a parent account, it is very easy. You're just gonna go to where the green box here says create a parent focus account. Um, 
if you had one before and you can't remember, it's no longer the old UMRA status where you have to go into school with an ID. There is a orange box right here that says forgot password. You just need an email address to set up the parent account. Um, so if you did forget yours, you just have to click that orange box where it says forget password. You will get a verification link sent to your email and then you just have to reset your password. So we've tried to make it a little bit easier for you so you're not having to go to a school with the ID. Once you have a parent account, you're gonna go ahead and log in. Depending on um, depending on if you set up or have students linked, your screen's going to look a little bit different. If I had students attached or linked to my current screen, I would have their pictures and their information on the left-hand column. Um, since I don't have any linked students, I'm going to see under alert as well as student reservation system that you're going to click that link. So you're still going to have to go to the student reservation system. When you get to this part, the student reservation system, you're going to answer if your child is new or previously attended a Pinellas County Public School. And this could mean that they attended in first or second grade. Maybe they were screened and are attending private. So at any point in time, whether it is a new or charter school, um, you would be collecting, I'm sorry, we're just having, making sure you get the right screen up to see. So I'm gonna actually, cause I'm not sure if you were able to see before, I'm gonna go ahead and log us out. And I apologize, I just wanna make sure everybody is fully aware um, of what we're talking about and what you're seeing. So this is the screen right here. Um, once again, the left-hand box is if you do not have a parent account, you would click that box. It's going to ask some basic information and your email address. You will get that email sent to you, um, and you'll have to verify it, and then you'll have a parent account. You do not need to link a student at this time to be able to apply. If you're having trouble logging in, you would just hit the forget password and it'll send a link to you to reset your password. Um, once you reset it, you should be able to log in. Any school, um, your child's school, if you're having difficulty, the, dis the data management technician, the DMT, or the tech help desk, which is 588-6060, will be able to assist you with that. Once you have a parent account, you're gonna go ahead and log in. This screen is gonna look a little bit different depending on if this is brand new and you just verified or if you have students attached. If you have students attached over in that left-hand column, you're gonna see each of those students' names listed and if there's a picture in there, you'll see the picture as well. Um, tomorrow or at midnight, you should see a link here that says click here to apply for a district application program under the alert. Um, there'll be two spots, so one will be under the alert, and the other one's going to be in the left-hand column, and you're going to want to click Student Reservation System. When you get to this screen, you're going to have two options. One is if your child has never attended, never been screened, never anything with Pinellas County Schools. The other is if they are in a charter school, if they attended previously, um, may not attend now, but at any point in time they were registered and given a student ID, you're going to click the top one. If they're brand new to the school system, you're going to click the bottom one. Just so I don't share private information, I'm going to click the private or the new to the county. When this screen comes up, you're going to look for district application programs. So it's going to be the topmost link. It's going to say Magnet Fundamental and a Career Academy Programs. You're going to want to say that it's for the 24-25 school year, and you're going to click continue. You're going to put um, the child's first name and last name. You'll notice that there's red asterisks for the required information or screens with required information. Um, I'm going to, just so we know to delete, <laughs> I'm going to put in that the child's name is test. Um, you're going to put the date of birth.
And then the other piece um, is that you want the spelling to be just as it is on the birth certificate. So however it's on the birth certificate is what you want to go in here. If your child was already a student, the same type of screen is going to come up, but you can go ahead and put the student ID number in. So if you have that 52 number, typically if you um, first registered in Pinellas County Schools, you could put that 10-digit number where it says student ID. If I had put in student information of previous student, the name's going to come up here, so you would verify that it is the child you're talking about. Since I put in as new student, I'm going to hit continue. For this is where you're going to put in the gender and what grade they are applying for. You do not need to put the social security number. It's just there. It's optional. There is some information that the state of Florida requires us to capture. So the next information is just asking for the ethnicity and the race. You would put whatever they are there. The next one that it's going to ask you for is the address. And this is a big one if you have moved. So if you are in our system already and you moved, you need to make sure that the address matches what is in focus. And this is one of the biggest error messages that we get through the whole process because you'll get an error message if you moved. The other time that might come up with an error message in this particular screen is if you have a new house or new <coughs> condo or new apartment that may not have yet been in the address atlas. If that was the case, when you called student assignment when you were trying to enroll, you would have gotten something called a proxy address. So the mailing address is correct, but the proxy address or what shows up as the main address may be a little bit different. So it needs to match the proxy address. If you get an error message, just call student assignment at 727-588 6210 and we will be happy to help. So you're going to enter the address and hit continue. If you have an apartment or a condo or something else, you just put it in street address 2. You're then going to put in the parents first and last names. the relationship, or if it's a guardian, relationship to the child. You're going to put in an email address. And a lot of people don't want to put the phone numbers here or on the last page. I would recommend putting the phone number and email address. That's the only place where the school will get information if you're on a wait list or if there's a call, or if they want to call and remind you to go and check the acceptance period. This is where um, you would need to put that information in. Otherwise, sometimes we'll have people who don't enter a phone number or an email address, and if we're going to make a call off the wait list, there's no way in contacting you. So we totally recommend that you supply some contact information. A second parent is optional. You do not need to put the information in. Once again, you're just looking for the asterisks. This page that we get to now addresses those priorities that Mandy talked about. So the first one is if you're claiming sibling. If you put yes, and this is a big one, <laughs> you need to get the student ID number. And you can get that through the parent portal account if your child is linked or in there, or you can get that from the rep latest report card. Um, you would put the school that they are in, and then it's going to ask for the 10-digit student number. And that is that usually, once again, it usually starts with a 5-2. If you came from another county, it may have a, another starting couple digits. That 10-digit code will go in there. If you do not put that code in here, the system's not going to be able to link them. So you may not get that sibling priority right away. And don't worry, we do have like a, a newly invited sibling period and an appeals period where we can work that in. But this is where you guarantee or get that sibling priority piece in there. And that 10 digit student ID number is an important part to put in there. The next question is asking if they are already attending a program. And this is where that feeder pattern comes in. So an elementary fundamental to a middle school fundamental, um, Bay Point Elementary to Bay Point Middle School. So if they are currently attending a program, you would put down which school they're attending. 
The next question isn't going to be available during the initial application period. It has to do with military priority. Um, that is something that we apply during the late application period. Um, the next question has to do with the professional courtesy. So as Ms. Letters or Mandy said, you have to be full-time at the school. So if I had a child going to a program, I would not get a professional courtesy to any of the magnet schools because I work in the admin building. So you have to work full-time at that school to be able to get that priority. And the next one is trying to capture the information on is there multiple births? Um, so are there multiple siblings at the same grade level? Um, it's not a guaranteed priority, but we do try our best to keep families together. Sorry, it's going a little slow. The next question is asking which other grade levels you're applying for. Uh, it once again stresses that that top priority has to be your number one school choice. What will come up are the programs that you're eligible for. So if you don't see some programs, it's because they are not within your eligible application area. You'll be able to see all the countywide ones, but you may not see all the other options. So since I put in an address that is in what's considered mid-county, I'm not going to see some North County only options or South County only options. I'm going to see countywide and mid-county options. At this point, I can rank them. If I want the sibling priority, and I said the sibling was at Bay Point Elementary, I have to put the same school as my number one ranked. If I don't put it as number one, I'm not going to get that priority. This is particularly important um, a lot of times with our fundamental middle schools. We see a lot of debate or people wanting, can't not deciding between like Palm Harbor University, for example, compared to Osceola High School. And they'll put Palm Harbor as one and Osceola as two, figuring they're going to get that feeder pattern priority. And that does not happen. So as Mandy said earlier, it's whatever is that number one choice, that's going to be priority. Another question we frequently get was, if I choose less programs, will I have more of an advantage than if I choose all five? And the answer is no. So choosing just one program or choosing five programs isn't going to impact your chance of getting in. Um, what's going to impact it is the number of other applicants applying. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and rank my choices, and I'm just going to randomly choose some. If you choose the same number, you'll get an error. If you skip a number, you'll get an error message. So if you try to hit continue, you will get an error message in that. And like we said, you could choose if there's just one program, that's the only one you want, that's fine. Or you could choose up to five. It is a weighted um, randomized thing. So they look at the, the ranking of your choice is how they kind of will do it. So ones get offers, twos get offers, and so on. This is basically listing the choices of programs that you have selected. It does give you the contact information. So you have the coordinator's name and phone number. So if you have follow-up questions, or in the case, if you are not at a Pinellas County school, so if you're applying from private or you're applying from out of county, and I, I should have, in the beginning, out of county is a separate form, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but if you are applying and you are from private and you have one of those entrance criterias, that's the person listed here is the person you're going to bring or drop off that documentation. If you are in county already, um, we're able to access the records. So we can pull up the test scores. We can check it out. So um, you will find out there's a review period. So there's a time in between when you apply and when you get the offers. And that's kind of when schools are going through and they're verifying. If you put down a sibling claim, they're checking to make sure that there really is a sibling at the school. Um, they'll be checking that entrance criteria and other factors. We recommend printing this page. You're not complete yet. Um, but if you print this page, it gives you a physical record. Um, this also, once again, that phone number and email address, 
I cannot um, emphasize enough to enter some information here so that we are able to reach out if there's a problem with um, the application, if there's a question, um, anything with that. And then you're going to hit submit. And I apologize, the Wi-Fi is taking a little while with this today. Once you submitted, um, if you would just exit and enter any more children that you have, there is a survey that we would like. Um, it kind of lets us know a little bit like where you saw some of the marketing or advertising. Also gives us some information as we look to expand our offerings. What types of programs are you looking for? Um, what would you like to see? Um, and a couple other questions that just help us do a little bit better job of making sure that we're offering the types of choices that you want. Um, we're going to go a little bit more into some information, but I did want to mention one more time, if you are out of county, there is a separate form. It's called a special attendance permit, um, and you have to apply using that form. Our current system cannot take an out of county address, um, so you would just use that form to apply. We're going to turn it back over to Mandy for a couple more pieces of information, and then we will open up for any questions you may have. All right, we are going to next look at some important dates. So mark your calendars. We have <clears throat> several parent application assistance events happening soon. Uh, the first one is tomorrow from 9.30 to 11 at Kings Highway Elementary, um, January 10th, 9.30 to 11 at Douglas L. Jamerson Elementary. Uh, January 11th, there's a nighttime event at um, P-TECH in St. Petersburg. The 15th will be in the afternoon at Gulfport Montessori. January 16th in the evening at Tyrone Middle School. And then January 18th uh, in the evening at Tarpon Springs Middle School. And there, um, we will be there, one of us will be there um, with others to assist us in helping you through that application process or with any questions uh, that you may have um, in case you're just more comfortable in person. So feel free to come out to those events and get those applications submitted. Some other important dates. <clears throat> the initial application period begins tomorrow, January 9th, and closes at 5 p.m. on January 19th. The initial acceptance period is beginning on Valentine's Day on February 14th and will close on February 23rd at 5 p.m. Ellen briefly mentioned that newly invited sibling uh, request week or appeals week, and that will run from February 26th through March 1st. So what that means is if you um, have two students that you're applying for and one gets in and the other does not, you can call the coordinator at that school during the newly invited sibling week and you can claim newly invited sibling priority. So you would just call that coordinator and say, um, <clears throat> one of my students um, was accepted. We accepted that invitation for them. Um, and I'd like to claim newly invited sibling priority for my other child. And that, while not a guarantee, it will move the second student um, up, the, up the wait list and give them a better chance of getting in. We talked about those reasons why your student may be found ineligible. So it may be because of academics or it could be because of behavior. During that same week, February 26th through March 1st, you have an opportunity to appeal that decision. So you could contact the coordinator again um, <clears throat> and, you know, maybe um, – present some additional information that the coordinator may not have had access to, to potentially um, consider uh, <clears throat> allowing your student to remain on that wait list instead of being found ineligible. I'm going to jump in real quick here because one thing I think we failed to mention is that it's not a first come first serve during the initial application period. So you can apply anytime. You don't have to wait up to midnight to get your um, application in, even though there's usually several hundred within the last <laughs> um, first five minutes of that. Uh, you can apply anytime from the 9th through the 19th. 
Um, I do also want to warn you, and once we're done with this, I'll, I'll take you back to the page to kind of show you what would happen if you went back in to apply, um, because you could end up deleting your application after a certain screen. So um, we'll show you kind of what to do with that. You can go in and change your numbers or your rankings. Whatever is the last entered um, application on July 19th by um, 5 p.m. is what will actually go into the system for that application. So anytime during that initial application, it's not going to matter. Um, it's only afterwards um, during the late application where timing does make a difference for that. And then that last date there, <clears throat> the late application period will open on March 19th. And um, yeah, so jot those down so that you have them. And I will open up for our Q&A. Or did you want to do the, show them how the, to avoid the deleting of the application first? So when you go back in <clears throat> to apply, you're going to get to a screen. Um, let's see if it pulls up. You would start back in. There's two different things. One is you would have an email confirmation. So on that email confirmation, it's going to give you an application number. So you can either go back in and use that application number, or you can put in the name, date of birth, or if you were a current student, the student ID. The application, the email confirmation, is also going to give you that contact information once again so you know who to reach out to and just gives you some reminders as well. So if you notice in the status here, let me get a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit easier. In the status, it says I already applied but I'm gonna select it because that's the student I'm doing and I'm gonna continue. So you may go back in for a few reasons. Maybe you just wanna make sure that you entered them correctly. Maybe you want to <clears throat> make some changes to those school choices, um, <clears throat> but just be careful as you're clicking through those screens. This screen here is kind of like, we, and we will, there'll be several different pop-ups. So um, even with several pop-ups, sometimes we'll get people who don't realize that they're deleting. If all you want to do is to view or print your school choices, you just click that left-hand button that says view or print choices. That's going to do no harm. It's going to bring up what you applied for, and it's going to allow you to print those out. If you did want to change your choices or your options, and that's when you would hit change school choices, um, you will get that pop-up. If you click continue, like there's a warning sign. Um, if you hit continue at this point forward, your application is deleted. So even though you have that email confirmation, even though you have the application number or proof, the minute you hit continue here, and then one more time, it'll tell you it's been deleted. So at this point, I don't have an application in. Um, I'd have to go in and complete the full stops to get another application. So I just, we tried to put the pop-ups as warnings, but I did want to let you know um, that if you do do it and you get past that point, you have to complete the whole application, going through the address, the information, um, your choices, the confirmations, and then submit. And then you'll get a new application and, and number with that. I did want to point out one other thing. On the website, pcsb.org backslash DAP. There is a guide that um, in a couple of the slides that Mandy referenced, the guide is there. A copy of this or video is going to be there as well. So if you wanted to sometime in the next couple of days apply, you can play it, pause it, go step by step and making sure that you're doing the steps right. It also gives information um, as well as our email address. Um, I will tell you, um, 
we do get really busy so it is much quicker response if you email um, either at dap at pcsb.org or student assignment um, today we were um, picking up to try to call and answering phone calls as they came in so we tend to be we have extra staff who come in to assist but you will most likely get a quicker response from our office if you email if you have specific program questions there are websites here that have little information about all the programs as well as in the guide it does have um, Sorry, I'm going to go through a little quick just to point out a couple pieces. Um, it does have the contact information for each school. So it'll give you the school's website as well as the phone number so you can get more program specific questions with that. So at that point, that's kind of all the information we had to share out. Um, now we want to open it up so that we could address any questions or concerns that you have um, and make sure that you are prepared for this application process. Hi, our first question has several parts to it. Can I do two programs at the same time? For example, medical program and early college. Is early college part of the DAP system? And do we apply for the programs online? So there's several different questions. There are a few programs where you can do multiple programs, and that's usually with the ACE, Cambridge ACE programs. So Cambridge ACE has a little bit more flexibility than the IB. Um, so students at Tarpon Springs High, students at Hollins, um, and students at Clearwater are sometimes able to take another program. So doing like the Leadership Conservatory for the Arts or the VET program and Cambridge ACE. Um, you can't accept both programs, so it's more of a scheduling piece when you get there. Those are really, with the Cambridge ACE, are the only um, high school programs where you could be in more than one program. Um, the only other exception um, is the Center for Gifted Studies at John Hopkins. Um, they're able to take an art focus, so you get the gifted studies as well as choosing an art focus at John Hopkins. Other than that, it's choosing one program or the other. Um, to answer the second part with the early college admissions, that is actually run through the Advanced Academics Office. Um, it is an online application, but it's not part of DAP. So if you do early college, you actually end up forfeiting or, or giving up your seat at the DAP program. So to be a DAP student, it's a full-time commitment. So it has to be full-time at the school. Um, so for those students who choose to do early college or early admission, you would be in early college or early admission. Um, the dates are posted on the Advanced Academics um, website. Um, so we'll typically see some students who will do like ninth and 10th grade and 11th and then do early admissions and leave the DAP program at that point. So two separate online applications, um, two separate programs, and you can't be in early admissions and a magnet program or fundamental. Our next question is a clarification question. What time does registration open tomorrow? Midnight tonight. 12.01 a.m. And once again, it's not a first come, first serve. Don't, so. don't stay up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not going to help. Our next question asks, my son attends Curtis Fundamental. We moved over the summer, and we now live very close to Tarpon Springs Fundamental. Is that okay to request a shift between fundamental schools? If so, do I note Tarpon Springs as choice one and his, and his existing school as choice two? So you wouldn't need to reapply for the existing school. So the application and acceptance at the school once you enroll is, is good up until the highest grade level that that school offers. So in the case of Curtis Fundamental, um, you wouldn't need to re apply, reapply each year. That would be good until he left for middle school. Um, you could... Uh, apply for Tarpon Springs Fundamental um, as your number one choice, and that would not affect your seat at Curtis Fundamental until later on in the e in the year when you'd be asked to make a decision if you didn't get an invitation. So if you were waitlisted at Tarpon Springs Fundamental um, later on in the year, you would be asked to um, either remain at Curtis. They, um, 
So later on in the year, you would be asked if you wanted to either remain in the program at Curtis Fundamental or remain on the wait list at Tarpon Springs and go to your zone school. So you can't be um, in two programs uh, or on a, a program's wait list while in a program. Uh, you'd have to make a decision at that time. Um, so yeah, you could you could apply and and be in your program right now. So that kind of brings up another question um, that we frequently get. If you are currently in a program and you're happy with that program, you do not need to reapply. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the program, you're in that program until the highest grade level. The other piece that when Mandy was talking that I also want to bring up is a lot of times we get questions with people applying year after year after year. So once you're in, you're into the highest grade level. So typically there's the same amount of seats in kindergarten, first, second, third grade. So unless someone was to leave, there's typically not seats that are gonna be available. So we see offers in the entry grade levels are where there's the most seats. So kindergarten, fourth grade will get an increase at some schools, not all, um, because the teacher student ratio increases a little bit. So the best chances to get in elementary or kindergarten to fourth grade for middle school it's sixth grade and then for high school it's ninth grade um, once those seats are filled um, there's usually they will roll over into the next year and so there's not as many they're only trying to fill seats of people who may have moved or decided maybe the program wasn't the best for them I do want to address a question that just came in um, where they were saying it looks like the registration is currently open and will my application count so we frequently do testing windows just to make sure everything's up and running correctly. If you were able to get in at that time, it will count. We just will, um, our TIS will timestamp it in the correct date. So um, if you did just apply and were able to get in when that testing window was open, um, it would just show up or appear that you applied um, at 12.01 um, tomorrow. Okay, our next question asks, would there be an increased chance of getting a school if you only put in two preferential schools as opposed to five? No. No. All right, our next question asks, if our child is wanting to attend a program at their zone school, do they have to take the DAP transportation? So that is something that transportation works out every year. I think they do an analysis of where the stops would be, um, and I can't really answer that question. Um, transportation's phone number is 727-547-2020, um, and they will have the answer. Um, I will get that answer, and so on the Facebook Live post, as well as on our Facebook, as soon as I get that answer tomorrow, we'll have that up. Um, on both so that we can make sure that your question is answered. I, I'm just not a, completely sure. Mm -hmm. Like while we work hand in hand with transportation, we, we don't have all the answers. <laughs> if my child is already zoned to the school we want, do we still have to do the application process? If you would like to be accepted into the DAP program, yes. So you will automatically roll up into the traditional part of the program, but if you wanted that DAP program, you would need to do it. So if you were zoned for Northeast and you just want to be at Northeast, that's fine. But if you wanted to be in the Academy for Finance or if you wanted to be in the AOIT program, you would have to apply for that program. What is SESIR on behavioral, behaviorally ineligible screen? That's assessor is a serious offense um, as defined by the state. So it would be something like a drug offense, assault, a serious behavior incident. Does a student have to qualify for IB before applying or will it be determined once they are accepted? So um, that is what that review process or review period is for. So you can apply and then the coordinators are going to review that student's um, academic history scores and so forth during that window. Um, and then they'll be marked either eligible or ineligible and offers will go from there. And once again, if you're currently a charter school student or if you're currently one of our students, you don't need to turn in that paperwork. We will have access to that. It's only if you're coming from a private school or if you're coming from out of state or out of county and you just recently moved into the county that you'll have to provide that documentation. 
For gifted programs, if my child passed his first test and has to take the second IQ test within three months, can he still apply and qualify? Yes. So, and I would recommend doing it. Um, what will happen is you will sh appear as ineligible originally when the first results come out. Um, and then once they finish that screening process, if the eligibility is determined, um, they'll be placed back on the wait list in the original spot. So if you waited to the late application period to apply for the screening, you'll actually be lower down on the wait list. So if you've passed that first step, I would totally recommend applying at this time. Um, and it'll give you a little bit better positioning um, to get in. If my student is currently in a program but wants to apply for a different program, will this jeopardize her current seat? Not at this time. You can apply for a different program while remaining in the program that you're, that you're currently in during that initial application period and, and it won't affect it at all. Um, what will come into play later on um, down the line is if, say, you didn't get an invitation to the other program that you were interested in, you were waitlisted, you'll have to make a determination about, you know, whether I want to stay in the program I'm in or remain on the waitlist for the, the new program that I'm interested in and return to my zone school. So there will be a certain point in time later on down the road where you would have to make that decision, but it will not jeopardize your spot during the initial application process now. Can you explain feeder pattern priority and sibling priority again? Sure. So feeder pattern is, I, I hate the name feeder pattern. What it really is is program continuation. So there are certain programs that have been identified. Most of them are elementary going into middle school with the exception of fundamental, which does um, elementary to middle and then middle to high school. All the rest are elementary to middle. And what will happen are the feeder patterns that exist. Um, once again, in that DAP guide, you'll see they're listed which feeder patterns go. But if you're in Jamerson um, Advanced Mathematics and Engineering, you'll have a feeder pattern priority to Bay Point Middle or to Azalea Engineering. So the idea that you're continuing that program, Gulf Beaches with the Center for um, Innovation and Digital Learning to Tyrone Center of Innovation and Digital Learning. So there's some programs that have that natural progression. Um, if they choose to apply, if they put it number one, then they will get that priority. Um, to go and continue the program. Sibling is a little bit different. We have two types of sibling priorities. The first one is that I have a sibling who already attends the school and will be at the school at the same time. So if I'm applying for middle school and my sibling is in sixth or seventh grade, I can get a sibling priority because we'll be at the school at the same time next year. If my sibling was in eighth grade, next year when I would attend, they would be in high school, so I would not get that sibling priority. The second type of sibling priority is that newly invited sibling priority. So if we are new to the system or new to Pinellas County Schools and Mandy's my sibling and she's in fourth grade and I'm in second grade and we both applied for Curtis, Mandy got an offer and accepted during the initial acceptance period. Um, the family could for that week after the initial acceptance period only, so February 26th through March 1st, say one sibling got in, the other did not. The school will verify that. If that's the case, then the sibling who did not get in will roll up towards the top of the um, wait list to just give a better um, chance of trying to keep the family together. We're not going into more depth than that right now because we will do another Facebook Live event when it comes to acceptance period um, and we'll go mm -hmm. a lot more into those priorities and, and differences with that. But those are the two types of sibling um, priorities that we have. Does Sanderlin qualify for feeder pattern for St. Pete High IB? No. So there's no magnet schools for middle have feeder pattern or program continuation to high school. It'll prep you, it'll prep you well to right. be successful there, but there, there is not that feeder pattern to high schools with the exception of a fundamental program. What exceptions apply to Eastlake Middle School for proximity priority? 50%. So oh, 50%, right. 
unlike most middle schools, which are at 20 percent, um, East Lake Middle has a 50 percent proximity. So after the um, sibling priorities, after the professional courtesy, after pro um, 50% of the remaining seats will go to those with the smallest Manhattan distance formula. And that is true for sixth grade. Um, a little bit different this year is Mangrove Bay Middle School. Um, when we have a new program or a new school open, we will do that proximity priority for all three grades mm -hmm. in the case. So this year for Mangrove Bay Middle, sixth, seventh, and eighth, we'll all have that 50% um, proximity as well. If my student is already in a program in sixth grade, will I need to apply again? No. No. Once you apply and are accepted, then you are good up until the highest grade level that that school offers. Does students attached appear once we complete documentation presentation? I'm so I think think what you're referring to is attaching a student to the parent account. So if that's the case, if not, please just um, enter more of a question in so we can better um, answer your question. You can attach a student when they're active. So if I was applying and I had a student in private school and so they're not one of our students, I can apply, I can put the information in. I can't link them to my parent account until you've actually accepted and you're going to enroll the student. Um, then I can link it. If they're a student already in our county, um, so they're an active student either at a charter school or a regular school, you can link the student to your account. Um, it's just if you're new to the district, um, or they're not attending this year, they're in a different school, um, then you cannot link. Once you get the acceptance or the invite, once you accept it, once you bring in your paperwork to enroll the student, then you'll be able to link them or attach them to your parent portal account. Um, if that's not what you meant by attached, if you could just kind of put a little bit more detail of, of what you were looking for, we'll, we'll be happy to answer your question. Hi, if my child's middle name appears on the birth certificate, do I have to put it in the middle name area or can I just leave it blank? So you could put it in the middle area, but when you go to enroll, they're going to enter it. So at some point in time, you're going to have to put the um, middle name in. It is easier um, for this the way the system works that if they apply and are accepted, what information you put there automatically rolls into the reservation. So it's less steps for you to do um, on the other end. So I would recommend just putting the middle name in there. Um, same with a suffix if you have it, like the third or second junior. Um, a good time to put it is in the initial step. Is the information available about first choice applicants for particular schools last year? Could you say that one more time? <laughs> Is the information available about first choice applicants for particular schools last year? It's not readily available. It's something that we could pull or, or, or put on there. So it's something that we could look up and say that we had the X amount of first number one places um, or applicants. We can definitely pull that information together and put that on the website. Um, we could probably also do um, the number who accepted for or number who were offered. So we can definitely pull that information. It may take a day or two, but um, we can definitely have that up and posted on the website um, before the application period ends. If a student was accepted with an SAR, can we still apply for DAP? If we can and they get denied, will it affect their SAR status? No, you can definitely do both. So if you've already been granted an SAR, you can apply for DAP now um, without it affecting your SAR position at all. Um, <clears throat> but just as with other things, whatever you accept last is the one that will override all of your other choices. So during the acceptance period, if you decide to accept that DAP seat, it's going to cancel out that SAR seat. So just, just keep in mind whatever you do Whatever last choice you make is the one that will stick. Do I need anything for incoming kindergartners before applying for DAP? No, you don't need any um, 
paperwork or anything at this point in time until you would go to enroll is when you would take all of your um, kindergarten enrollment documentation. Uh, at this point, you just need to complete that application and go through the steps as, as we demonstrated on the, on the website. So the kindergarten registration, you'll be able to make reservations for the zone school starting um, February 5th with the Ready, Set Kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, so you can either choose to make that enrollment piece there with your zone school at that time if you choose, or you can wait to see the results of your DAP application. Um, if it's the DAP application, then you can wait to accept, then you can bring that information into the DAP school. Um, either way, it, it won't make a difference with that. On the address for the application, if I live in an apartment, do I put my apartment number or street number? So you're going to put your street number for the main address, and then when you get, once you enter the, there's one screen in the beginning where you'll put the, the street number and the street name, and then next screen, once you confirm it, it'll say second street name, and that's where you would put either your cart apartment, um, unit number, lot number would go in there. And just as a reminder, my son attends uh, speech at Azalea and has a student number. Do I select new student or current student when applying for kindergarten? So current student, since he's receiving those services, that student ID number will be the same. And if you have that student ID number, it's going to save you from entering a lot of information already. So um, it'll save you some steps and information that you have to add in. Can I apply for an incoming kindergarten student under my portal account if I have one child already in the Pinellas County system? Yes. So there's there's two ways. Um, one, you can go in and you can hit that student reservation link, um, and then you should be able to enter the one student. Um, if you think of, if you go back and we've watched this, you get to that exit screen, and one of the things that's typed on that exit screen that says if you have another child to go ahead and enter it there. There's another option if you're starting up or making a new parent account right away. You'll have two boxes. One will say enter new student information. One will say um, link a student. But underneath it um, is a box that says student reservation system. And so if you're brand new setting it up, if you just click that lower box that says student reservation system, that'll take you to the application. Can we rank schools on our application if we're out of county and using SAP? So you can rank schools for sure um, on the form. It's just one form. It'll ask you to list the schools and programs. Um, I would ask that if you are applying for um, multiple programs at the same school, um, don't just put, um, for example, Northeast. Put, like, is it the AOF for Academy of Finance, the AOT, is it the Culinary? Um, program with that. You can definitely rank that. I do want to warn you that if you are applying through that special attendance permit, it is a little bit later. The timeline of um, accepting is a little bit later into the year. Um, there is um, some legislation that says an out-of-county student cannot displace an in-county resident. So we have to give Pinellas County residents first shot of the seats. Um, and then we look to see, um, are there seats available? Is there a wait list? And then we're able to grant some of the out-of-county. So that out-of-county, we still do have quite a few who attend um, magnet programs out-of-county. We just have to wait a little bit later into um, the spring, early summer to be able to ensure that we are um, compl compliant to the law. Do we reapply if they were on a wait list from last year's application? Yes, yes. The wait list from last year um, will be dissolved um, coming up soon, and which just means they'll, they won't exist anymore. So yeah, you, you would reapply each year. If one parent completes an application and the other parent goes in to make changes for the same student, will the application priorities update? So that is a great question. In the current system, only one person's able to make that application. So the person who made the application is the only one username that'll be able to make any kind of edits. So if um, you're both trying to apply, whoever made the application first is gonna be the only person who can go in and make the edits. Um, if there is a conflict or any kind of um, questioning with that on who should or question with the educational decision making, that's just a call to my office and then we will sort through um, and make that resolution happen. 
If you don't get your first choice, what are your chances for the second choice? It all depends on how many how many applicants are applying. So there are some programs that get hundreds of applications and others that, that, that don't get as many. Um, so your chances will be higher if that was listed as your second choice. As Ellen mentioned briefly, it's kind of like a weighted lottery. So it'll sort all of the number ones and then all of the number twos. So if there are you know, less number ones, more twos, then your chance of, of ranking uh, of a number two ranked program would be better of getting in versus, um, you know, hundreds of applications with that same program as their number one choice. So it, it really, it really depends on how many applications that we're receiving for those programs. And it also um, depends on if you're only applying for the really popular programs, mm -hmm. then the likelihood of getting offers to them are going to be a little bit smaller. If you're um, applying for some that may not be as popular but still have strong programs, you may get um, several different offers. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll go more in depth when it's time for the acceptance period, but it is possible for people to get multiple offers. You'll get a temporary waitlist number um, because seats will be freed up. If I'm saying no to right. uh, accepting one, there's going to be no to some others. But um, I don't want to confuse you too much right now. We'll do that a little bit closer to the acceptance period um, for that. Do all eligible target group one IB students get accepted or is there a wait list? So in my six years involved with DAP programs um, and IB programs, um, I've seen all target group ones get invited. Um, so I would assume if we're going to go off of the past six years, I would assume um, it would be the same. Uh, once again, it all depends on how many people um, are applying. Each school will have a certain number of seats. So um, in a couple weeks, we'll be sorting out how many seats are in every single program. Um, and then it's a matter of when the however many people apply. If more people apply than there are available seats, that's when once that randomized process um, occurs and that people get offered, then that's when the wait list would start. Um, if there are less people who apply than the number of seats, then anyone who applied will get in. Um, we have some programs that um, we're able to offer seats to anyone who applies, and we have other programs who um, we have still people on the wait list who rank the selection as number one for the current school year. So it's really hard to say. It's hard to say percentage. It's hard to say likelihood um, until the application period's over. And I know it's frustrating because it seems like a, a gamble or a game and you're kind of playing the odds. But until we have all the numbers and see who all applies and, and all that, it, it's very hard for us to say, oh, you're going to have this likelihood chance and that type of thing. Um, so not to add on to the frustration, but um, it can be a somewhat complex um, process to apply. I am moving to Pinellas County before next school year. Can I still apply? How do I provide residency documentation? So if you are moving next year and you have an address and you have address verification, um, you can apply. If you do not have a Pinellas County address, you can apply currently. You can apply using the special attendance permit. Um, and if you just go to our website, um, pcsb.org backslash registration, um, or you just go to the search bar on the website and put in special attendance, it's um, form 4-302. Um, and you could just download that form and apply using that. Um, and then if you move here, you can also, once you're here and you'll have a Pinellas County address, you can enter that Pinellas County address. That is one thing. Um, if you put a Pinellas County address in and you don't live in Pinellas County, um, you'll get notification. You'll have a certain amount of time to enroll. Um, and if you bring in addresses that are not or it's not Pinellas County, you will um, forfeit that seat. So um, much better to do the special attendance permit. Um, and do it the right way instead of getting the seat or forfeiting it. Same kind of thing if you're currently in Pinellas County and you leave the county. So if you accept a position or a seat now and then you know you're moving to Manatee County or Pasco County, you don't get to keep that. 
um, necessarily. It depends on if there's a wait list with in-county students, that seat's going to go to an in-county student before an out-of-county, even if you were in-county when you accepted it. Do you have to fill out an application for your zone school? No, you do not. So the only, I'm, so, so, I'm sorry for, for that, for the reservation, if you are in a charter school um, and you wanted to come back to a public school, you will have to make a reservation. Um, but if you are in a Pinellas County school already, you will automatically enroll or roll over to your zone school. Um, it's only if you're a charter and wanting to come back or if you're a private um, and wanting to attend, then you would have to make a reservation. I'm sorry, I cut you off from that no, last you're question. Totally fine. There's always <laughs> exceptions for everything. All right. Um, I was told for SIR we wouldn't be notified until late to end of April. How will I know if my SIR was accepted when I apply for district choice? So the initial round of SAR notifications, and that's special assignment request for those of you who are listening and not sure. Um, SAR, or special assignment request, is when you want to go to a school that's not your zone school. Um, Transportation is not provided. The initial round was granted with the exception of kindergarten um, because we haven't had anybody enroll, and so it's kind of hard to give away available seats when we don't know how many seats are available. Um, so initial notifications went out. They'll, we will do several rounds throughout the spring um, to notify. So you should have received an email if you were accepted um, for that or granted it. Um, I will tell you what will typically happen with the DAP. We will call and reach out to say, by taking a DAP seat, you will be forfeiting that SAR. So you'll get contacted by my, someone from my office to let you know that if you do accept, please note that you would be giving up the SAR seat. Um, if you accept a DAP program and you're on the waiting list for an SAR, the same thing will happen. So if it comes time and we're able to offer you a seat for the SAR, you're going to have a choice to make. So as Mandy previously said, whatever decision you make last is the one that sticks. So at that point, if you accept a DAP and you get offered a uh, special assignment request and you accept, then you're forfeiting that DAP seat and you'll have the special assignment request seat. My daughter is zoned to attend Safety Harbor Middle School. This school is on its journey to become an IB school. Do I need to apply for the IB program or is she going to be automatically accepted? I would go ahead and apply. It is a little bit unique, mm -hmm. and I'll add on to that, um, to get IB accreditation, and they are actually on a, a track record doing yeah. amazing <laughs> stuff. Usually it takes a school about three years to certify, and it's looking like they'll be done in two years. So we're very excited about that. Um, with that program, to become an IB, everyone at that school will be exposed to the IB program. Um, so even if you're not in the DAP program, um, you will get the IB program benefits from that, but I like I would agree There's with you. There's no Mandy, harm in applying. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is DAP the only way to get into a school outside of our zone? Can we apply directly to the school too? So this application period is for magnet and fundamental programs. So if you are interested in attending a magnet or a fundamental school um, and or program, within a school, then this would be the time to apply. If you are interested in another school that's not your zone school, but is not a district application program, that's just uh, another zone school that is not your own, then you could apply for that using a special assignment request. Um, but this, this time period is for magnet and fundamental. When we add a student to our parent portal, do we still have to verify our identity before we can apply? If you're adding them to the portal before, if you want them linked, yes. If you don't want them linked or you're just doing so, if you go in and put it in as a new student, it should automatically, in that reservation system, you would do it as a DAP. So you'll have, um, if you remember the screen that we showed in the beginning, like district application programs was at the top, but then there are some other options available. Reservation for the current school year, reservation for next school year. Um, so if you're choosing the DAP and they apply, when that reservation's made, you can link them then, if, or you can link them 
them um, before. But unless they're going to currently attend, you're not going to be able to link them. So if it's a brand new student or an incoming kindergarten and they haven't done VPK, just go ahead to this SAR or the Student res um, Reservation System link and just make the application. If my child starts at an IB elementary, would they get any feeder pattern preference for a fundamental middle school? No. No. IB There's elementary fe uh, feeder program continuation is to the IB. So you'd go from the primary years program to the middle years program. So you would get program continuation or feeder pattern to the middle school IB, not to fundamental. If a student is accepted to a program and decides later to leave the program, Will she be kicked out and have to go back to her zone school? So if you are in a program within a school at a school that is not your zone school, then yes, you would return to your zone school if you decided to leave the program. I currently live in South County, but moving, moving to North County in May. How can I use a new address to apply for a North County school? So the system at this time only will allow you to use what your address is at this point in time. If you have a lease, so if you know that you're moving to North County and you have a lease or a contract or you have some kind of proof that you have an address or already have figured out where you're moving, you can apply using that. Mm -hmm. um, but currently, um, unless it's a countywide program where you could apply um, anywhere in the program, um, otherwise, it's going to stick with that address. If it's a pr just something to consider, if it's a program like uh, like an IB program, um, you could apply for the program within your application area that's current, and then you can email our office to request a transfer once you have settled on where you're going to be. So if you're South County now, you could apply for St. Petersburg, um, St. Pete High's IB program. Just send us an email and say, you know, hey, we, we are really interested in IB for our student, which this application indicates um, intent to, in to attend, right, the, an IB program in general. Um, but now we're moving to North County and we'd like to, to be considered for a transfer to um, Palm Harbor University High School's IB program. Um, it's not a guarantee, but it's something that we will consider around mid-June um, if there are seats available still and no wait list. So um, just something to keep in the back of your mind. What program eligibility documentation needs to be submitted to enroll for Curtis Fundamental? So absolutely none. No. Um, if you are accepted and you're not a current Pinellas County student, um, when it comes time to enroll, it would be the same required documentation um, as any Pinellas County school. So birth certificate, um, a physical within the last school year. There's a list on our website. So if you go to pcsb.org, um, backslash registration, that list will be there. Um, there's no special documentation required for the fundamental program. You will be asked to sign, same with the MAGNA program, a uh, commitment form or an agreement that just kind of lays out the expectations of the school, the student, and the family. Um, so once you're enrolled, they, you will get that form to sign. Do I need to submit recommendation letters for the Palm Harbor University High School IB program? No, they'll they'll review transcripts, they'll review test scores and those types of things, but they, they don't take recommendation letters into consideration. It's like it's like a checklist of like it's a form the and a checklist and they just go from. down the list. What's the proximity priority for mangrove mangrove bay middle? Fifty percent for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade this year since it's the inaugural uh, year of the school. Um, anytime after that, it would be 50% applied to sixth grade only. Correct. If I apply for a magnet program or school and my son is accepted, but we move out of county, would he still be eligible to attend as long as we provided transportation or would we lose his seat? You would have to reapply using the special attendance permit. 
Um, if there is room in the program and there is no wait list, he would be able to remain. Um, but if there is a wait list or the seats were full, um, we couldn't have him displace the Pinellas County student um, by law. Can a student that's already a freshman apply for a program? Mm -hmm. Yes. So magnet programs accept ninth and 10th grade applications with the exception of Seminole High Schools. Um, their scope and sequence of their cell and rise programs require um, a ninth grade entry. So magnet programs or ninth and 10th grade applications can be accepted. Um, and a lot of times that's because there's certain course requirements to complete the program. And if you start any later, you're not gonna be able to complete the program successfully. Fundamental schools, which are a little bit different, a little bit different um, philosophy and intent, they can take applications all the way up through 12th grade. So you can apply up to 12th grade for any fundamental high school, 9th and 10th for um, magnet programs. If I have a student in fundamental elementary and moving to middle school, can I put Eastlake Middle School as first choice and his fundamental middle school as second choice and still keep our spot in the fundamental school? No, remember when we reviewed those priorities that the priorities are only applied to your first rank choice. So <clears throat> in order to receive that feeder pattern or that program continuation priority, you have to select it as your number one choice. So it wouldn't apply if you selected it as your number two. Is the gifted studies feeder priority from elementary to middle apply to the part-time gifted elementary programs or only to those in the full-time gifted elementary schools? Only to those in the full-time centers for gifted studies. So Elisa Nelson, um, Midtown Academy. Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest Elementary, right. So only the full-time full, the full -time, um, centers for gifted studies. If we don't get into our DAP choice, when do we apply for other school choice options if we don't want to go to our zone school? So we had the first round of SARs. Um, we have a definite one on April 1st, and we're trying to see if we can get another one in um, in February um, as soon as we um, are able to determine if we're able to get that happening. We will post the dates and send out information on it. Um, but April 1st through the 15th is a definite another round that we'll be offering um, for that's called a special assignment request. Can you get transportation for DAP programs outside of your application area? For example, transportation to Largo from St. Pete? No, you won't be able to apply to any programs outside of your application area. So when you log in and you're clicking through um, <clears throat> and you, you choose elementary, middle, or high school to view your options to, to rank and select your choices, you will only be able to view those that are within your application area um, to um, attend something, a, a school outside of your application area with a special assignment request, um, you would not receive transportation. But that's not for the DAP side of the house. It would only be for traditional. So um, again, for DAP, you're only applying for those programs that are within your application area, which would, um, if transportation is available for that program, then you would receive arterial transportation. My child attended PCS in kindergarten and first grade before moving to private. Now, as a rising ninth grader, how do I find her former student number? And do I need that before we apply? So you don't need it. Um, if you have been in the student already, when you enter her name and date of birth, um, there'll be a confirmation screen and it'll come up with two options. One, is it a new student? Or they're gonna pull her former records and you would just choose her former records. If you want that student ID number, you could either email studentassignment at pcsb.org or you can call student assignment, but I will tell you um, the phone lines are, are jammed. Um, we stay late every night trying to get the voicemails um, down, <laughs> um, but it'll, you'll get a much quicker response if you email. And so there's two emails. One is dap at pcsb.org, and the other is student assignment with no space in between the two words at pcsb.org, and we can get you that student assignment number. Okay, we have a few questions left here. Um, if I applied to a non-zone school in December, where can I find a copy of my application that shows where I applied? Also, when can we apply to other non-zone schools? 
So you are only able to make one choice for the special assignment request. Um, you can email or call student assignment for that answer. Um, we for sure have a window open April 1st through the 15th. We're looking to try to see if we can get one sooner to get parents um, and families answer sooner. Um, we're hoping to be able to offer one in February, but for sure April 1st through the 15th. All right, we have one final question. Um, it's uh, date related. When do you know if you were accepted? So the acceptance period will open on February 14th and remain open uh, through 5 p.m. on February 23rd. So uh, keep in mind that you will not only need to apply, but you'll also need to accept that invitation. So both steps have to happen in order to reserve that DAP seat. So you'll apply during this window from uh, January 19th through, I'm sorry, January 9th through 5 p.m. on the 19th, and then you'll log back in February four, beginning February 14th, anytime within that, that time frame or that window to view your invitations and then make sure you're accepting uh, an offer if you receive an invitation that you're interested in to reserve that seat. And Mandy and I will do another one of these events um, to walk you through what it looks like, what to expect, and then any questions you may have of the acceptance period at that time. And I think he said that's the last question. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, this video will be available at the links that were provided. Um, so you can rewatch it. We will also have it posted on our main DAP website. So pcsb.org backslash DAP. Um, you can email us or call us and we will be happy to help. And good luck and I hope you get the school that you want. Thanks for joining us.